let's talk a little bit about um, about sort of the, the overall sort of process because we people will, will watch this who are students who are thinking about going to residency. Um, do you think like the way it worked out for you and your colleagues like uh, was like kind of good enough? Like a um, you know, talking point being, look, the match the match system is the most bizarre sort of thing in the world, and yet does it work? I I think it kind of does. What do you think? So I was thinking about this recently. My own experience with the match is complicated. Um, my first time was going through a residency match and then my second time was applying again through fellowship. Yeah. And I get very triggered thinking about it because like the whole thing is just so anxiety provoking, thinking that it's just all being left up to some computer algorithm. Um, my first time going through residency match um, was very hard because I really wanted to be home back in California with my family. And I initially didn't end up there. I stayed at my home institution and then I was able to transfer to the program that I finished residency at. Mm. So that was actually a big change from what I actually initially, where I initially matched at. And then for fellowship, it worked out great. And I was able to be really happy on match day, but I completely empathize with the patient. I mean, not the patient, the people who are not happy with their match because there's so much emphasis on this as you're applying through residency or applying, going through medical school and going through residency because it's all people talk about for all your fourth year. It's all you're thinking about. And so, so much of your energy and effort and like financial investment is going into this like it was back in the time when like you know at the time i was flying everywhere and like paying for hotels everywhere like tens of thousands of dollars for interviewing all across the country and it felt like this huge upset but i can't imagine it being any other way at the same time because you see that the top applicants at certain medical schools will still get the you know 30 interview invites for residency interviews and if they were to get 30 offers for jobs at all of those places, it would also be terrible. I just can't imagine it any other way. Yeah, I mean, it's weird um, to think about like this whole thing about how you're, when you're a fourth year, you're trying to find like the, the the fit, you know, or like where you fit in. But how does anyone even know that? And what does fit even mean? And fit can even be like a loaded term that could have like like negative implications about like like diversity and inclusion. You know, it's like it it really it's looking back on it is like how does anyone know anything like how did you know what you wanted i know and i think it's kind of like a romanticized idea right like you're like oh i'm going to find the residency program that's going to be my home and in reality most places will be okay and you'll become a skilled physician wherever you go how did you decide like just yeah i want to do OBGYN. I actually went into medical school wanting to be an OBGYN and I kind of zeroed in on that pretty quickly. I think I just loved maternal and child health from the get go. I did um, research on breastfeeding in college. And so I kind of focused my interest on that. And then all of the extracurriculars that I involved myself in during medical school just kind of confirmed it. In retrospect, I think I probably should have kept a more open mind because I was like, no, I'm definitely doing OBGYN every time when I was on any other clerkship and probably could have explored things a little bit more. I think, you know, it would have been nice to see if I liked anesthesiology, it would have been nice if I liked other surgical subspecialties, but it's worked out completely fine. Yeah, it's funny. I, I kind of was had an idea of when I came in, what I wanted. Um, and I switched pretty early because look, I always say this, like no one, very few people enter medicine saying, I'm going to be a pediatric urologist. Uh, and yet pediatric urology is like an amazingly cool field where they do like, they save like lots of lives and like help people's quality of life. But no one ever knew what that was, you know, like you, you knew what like a cardiothoracic surgeon was because you saw it on TV, but who the heck knew what like, you know, a rheumatologist did, you know, yeah. like it, it just, yeah. So it's always, that's always hard. And I actually think that like, in a way, there's so many ways in which it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like in my field, emergency medicine, like you can differentiate so much later than that because it's like, well, do you want to do teaching or do you want to do policy or clinical stuff with OB? It's a little bit like, okay, are you going to be a surgeon, a clinician or not? Right. 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 What's something that like medical students, early residents, uh, what's the message you want to give them that they can't possibly know yet because they haven't just finished residency and you just did. Okay. This is something that I recently heard that I, it really resonated with me. But I think that there's this sense that um, sometimes things feel like they have to be fair, 
But I think that something that I've realized was really helpful was realizing that if you're constantly waiting for something to be paid back to you or waiting for things to be fair, you will always be disappointed. So shifting your mindset to thinking like you will get what happens and sometimes it'll work out and sometimes it won't really is almost kind of liberating in a sense because if you're always waiting for that payback you will be disappointed and making the most of it along the way and just getting whatever meaning and joy and happiness throughout the journey will be most most worth it for you that's great advice i'll throw that mine in that generally when people are doing something that makes no sense to you it's because you don't have the full context that's it like they don't want to take a consult because that's because they just had six consults and they like don't have the bandwidth they don't want to see a patient uh, it's because they you know didn't sleep last night because they didn't they didn't have child care you know there's something you know and so almost 99 out of 100 conflict uh, are actually something that had nothing to do with whether the person's a good doctor or not it just has to do with like some other thing in life and and uh, when you remember that it's easier to like get through it yeah, no, I think that's that's good. Like giving people the benefit of the doubt and just realizing that people aren't like inherently bad people who are trying to just like punt your con your consults. And everyone, I like this. Someone told me something recently. Everyone's doing the best they can. Now you could say like some people's best isn't that good, but actually <laughs> it probably is better than you think. And it's just they're doing the best they can in that with that perspective. Um, cool. Well, listen, uh, where can we find you on social media? Because you are very active. Where can we find you? I'm on um, Instagram and TikTok as Adriana Wong MD. And if you message me or email me through there, I'm happy to answer any other further questions.